Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to be here. I want to thank the I want to thank the microphone. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. Um, coming to Egypt is uh, a supreme pleasure. I was here 20 years ago as a tourist, so I have uh, done a Falouka ride on the Nile. I've gone to Luxor. I've gone to the Valley of the Kings, and I'm still uh, amazed by all of the antiquities that are here. It's one of my very favorite places uh, to visit, so I'm going to try to do away with antiquities and tell you the most modern story about MSCs. And what I'm going to do is beg you, it's, uh, it's hard for me to beg, but I beg you to stop calling them stem cells because they're not stem cells. And, and I'm going to give you the science behind that. And it's my fault. I agree that they're called stem cells. But I'm going to show you the mistake I made and, and how to try to correct it. So uh, please bear with me. This is my uh, obligatory disclosure. I started a company called Osiris Therapeutics. Everybody in Egypt should know the story of Osiris, since uh, Osiris is the, the, the guard of, uh, god of regeneration. Um, I have nothing to do with this company anymore, uh, but Case Western Reserve University gets royalties, which they uh, uh, generously split with me, which won't pay for the water on your table. You don't have to worry about me becoming very rich. I'm a consultant for a company called Lipogens. You'll see why uh, I, I tell you about that. So I always like to be uh, controversial. So uh, I, I, uh, s since um, so many of you are females, um, every month you have massive bleeds and you never get sepsis. And the question is why? Because certainly the uterus is not a sterile organ. So I'm going to give you the reason uh, at the end of this lecture. So if, if I were to have a bleed on my arm uh, of, that, um, uh, of, of, of that quantity, I would be worried about infection. And, and yet uh, women don't get sepsis. I'll explain that later. So the theme of everything I'm going to say is, has to do with an individual's innate capacity to regenerate tissues. And the, the example I always use is the blood systems, because every single second, 15 million of your blood cells drop dead and are perfectly replaced. And so while I said that sentence, Two or three hundred million blood cells just dropped dead in your body and were perfectly replaced and no one in the back uh, clapped or said I'm super person. Uh, this is what you accept as the normal sequence of events. So you continuously regenerate every single tissue of your body, just the way you do with your bloodstream. Now, the, the cell that's responsible for all of your blood cells is the hemopoietic stem cell. So if you remove this hemopoietic stem cell by chemotherapy or radiation, all those circulating blood cells will die because they have half-lives and they'll die on time. So if you don't replace the hemopoietic stem cell, uh, you will expire. If you don't replace your liver stem cells, you will die. If you don't replace your cardiac stem cells, you will die. If you don't replace your kidney stem cells, you will die. In adults, those are the stem cells that are keeping you alive and your innate capacity to regenerate. If I took a piece of somebody's liver, you would say, oh, no problem. 
liver regenerates. So there must be a stem cell in liver. And there's a stem cell in every uh, tissue of your body. So in, in marrow, there's another cell, which I called uh, a mesenchymal stem cell. And in the late 1980s, I drew this hypothesis slide. And if this is a, a pointer, nope, that's on and off. That's not a pointer, so uh, there's no pointer. Nope. Nope. Yeah, okay. Let me put this back on. Which one? Which one? Oh, okay. Okay. I got it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Yeah, got it. So in the late 1980s, I uh, drew this slide as a hypothesis slide. And what I did is I put this MSC, mesenchymal stem cell, at the very top of this diagram. And, and what I tried to do is to show that you could have this lineage of change, which would take this cell and make it into a bone forming cell, or cartilage forming cell, or muscle forming cell. All of these we can do on a Petri dish. And so I, that's why I call it a stem cell. Because on a Petri dish, I can make cells dance on a Petri dish. And I can make them become all of these different cell types. This is not the way it works in your body, but if you're doing tissue engineering, if on a Petri dish or in a bioreactor, you're building a tissue, the MSC is a stem cell. But in your body, it is not this stem cell. And that's the mistake I made, which is I thought that what I saw on a Petri dish was what I would see in the human body. It's, it's not what happens. If we want to talk about regenerative medicine, I'm only going to talk about the top of the slide, the MSC, and show you how it can be used in regenerative medicine. So I, because I was involved in orthopedics, marrow is the magic tissue to use for all reconstructions. And so we worked on marrow and isolated MSCs from marrow. But every single tissue of your body, as listed here, there's a publication now that says you can get MSCs. So you can get MSCs from kidney, from liver, from pancreas, from brain, from whatever tissue is your favorite tissue, you can get an MSC. And you can put it in culture, and no matter what the source of the MSC, we can make them, we can make them uh, go to bone or cartilage or muscle or fat. So the MSCs from these different tissues in vitro, we can control their reactions. However, what do all of those tissues have in common? What they have in common is they all have blood vessels. And that's the key that I missed in, in the original hypothesis diagram. So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give you the end of the lecture first, and then give you data to show you uh, what the new story is. So MSCs come from pericytes. Every single blood vessel in your body has, so if this is a blood vessel, there's cells on top which are called pericytes. When the blood vessel breaks, the pericyte comes off and it changes, it differentiates into an MSC. From the front of the MSC, it makes a curtain of molecules that stop your overaggressive immune system from interrogating the injured tissue behind it. 
So this is your first line of defense against autoimmune reactions from being established. From the back of the MSC, from the back of the MSC, it makes molecules which let the tissue regenerate. So whether it's a stroke or acute myocardial infarct or kidney fibrosis, the mechanism is the same, but the molecules that are made are different. 